Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to today's children's message for March 5th, 2023. It's our new unit, Unit 19, Preparing for Ministry, Session 1, Jesus was born from Matthew 1, Luke 2, and John 1. Like I said, welcome back, friends. If you remember, I told you last week was our last session in the Old Testament, and this week we're starting our lessons in the New Testament. Remember the Old Bible is made up of Old and New Testament. This is the New Testament. And this week we start a new volume, volume 7, which is called From Heaven to Earth. So what do you think that means? You are absolutely right. It means that Jesus came down from heaven to live on earth. And our new unit 19 is called Preparing for Ministry. So let's get started in our worship time together. Did you bring your Bible? Because it's always good to have our Bible because it is God's word and it is true. The Bible tells us who God is, what he is like, and how he is at work within his creation. The Bible is an incredible book and it might even surprise you at times. Have any of you seen anything surprising this week? What was it? And how did you respond? You know, perhaps you went to a basketball game and saw someone make an amazing shot and score points for their team. Or maybe someone surprised you with an unexpected gift or treat. I had an unexpected treat. I went with my, my son's fiance to go get her dress fixed for her wedding. So, you know, you might have done something surprising of some kind of thing someone did for you this week. We all experience all sorts of surprises, some big, some small. In our story, we're going to learn about something else surprising, the birth of Jesus. But before you hear the story, let's think about our big picture question and answer. This month, it's what did Jesus do to save us? <clears throat> Jesus lived a sinless life, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. So long before, remember, if you remember, long before Jesus was born, God made a promise to send a Savior to rescue his children from sin. And God's people waited many years for the Messiah to come into the world, and the time had finally come. And Jesus entered the world in a very surprising way. Now let's hear more about our Bible lesson. It's this one right here, and you might recognize some of it. Our Bible lesson is Jesus was born, and it's found in the New Testament. In, it's in all four Gospels, but the, it's, the ones that we're going to focus on today are Matthew chapter 1, Luke chapter 2, and John chapter 1. So let's get started. Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. One day, an angel told Mary she was going to have a very special baby. The angel explained, this baby will be God's son. The angel also appeared to Joseph in a dream. And the angel said, you know, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Her baby was put there by the Holy Spirit. Name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And this was amazing news. Jesus, God in the flesh, would come as a light into the dark world. And Mary and Joseph lived in a town called Nazareth. Now, during the time of Mary's, <clears throat> Mary was pregnant, the Roman Emperor Caesar, Augustus, announced that everyone needed to return to their own towns and register for a census. That was a government way of counting how many people there were. And since Joseph was a descendant of, Dave, of King David, he and Mary traveled to Bethlehem, the city of David. And while they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. And you know, Mary and Joseph knocked and looked for a safe place to stay, but every place was full. So Mary and Joseph found a place where animals were kept, and that is where Mary had her baby. And Joseph named him Jesus, as the angels have said. And Mary wrapped him tight, the baby tightly in cloth, and laid him in a feeding trough. That night, some shepherds were watching over their sheep in the fields near Bethlehem, and suddenly an angel stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. 
And the shepherds were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I have good news for you. And for all the people today, a savior who was the Messiah and the Lord was born in the, to, for you in the city of David. Then the angel said, you will find the baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly the whole sky filled with angels praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to people he favors. And when the angels left and returned to the heavens, the shepherds decided to go straight to Bethlehem to see what had happened. They hurried to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the feeding trough. And then the shepherds went and told others about this baby Jesus. And everyone who heard about Jesus was amazed. And Mary thought about everything that was happening and tried to understand it. The shepherds returned to their fields, praising God because everything had happened just as the angels had said. Now we think about this story. You know, Mary and Joseph trusted God. You know, this was a miraculous birth of, of Jesus. And it was also a very trying time for Mary and Joseph because they had not yet been married. And so Mary was considered a virgin. And you know, each part of the story from their social standing to where Mary would give birth required them to trust God. Because if you remember, they had no place to find. And in our story, the angels celebrated. You know, they shared the good news with the shepherds and gave all the glory to who? To God, yes, to our God. And the shepherds were obedient. They obeyed Jesus. When they heard the instructions from the angel, they went to find this baby who was going to be their Lord and Savior, the Messiah. And they found him, just as the angels had said, in a manger or a feeding trough. You know, the birth of Jesus takes us to our Christ connection. It was good news for not just the shepherds, not just Mary and Joseph, but for all people. And Jesus was no ordinary baby. He was God's son sent to earth from heaven. The way Jesus came into the world was surprising because everyone thought he was going to be a royal king, you know, someone born into a royal family. But instead, he was born into an unlikely couple in a small town. And God sent his messengers first to the humble shepherds watching their fields, not to the priest or the Pharisees. He chose unlikely people to be part of his story. And Jesus demonstrates the kind of king that he himself would be, one who would be humble and bring about an entirely new kind of kingdom. Jesus promised the Savior came into the world to show us what God is like and to deliver us from sin and death. What did Jesus do to save? Jesus lived a sinless life, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. <clears throat> and God has given us the greatest gift of all, his own son, Jesus Christ. That's such an amazing thing. Now let's try this demonstration. You know, I have this bag. And in this bag, I have several things, you know, and it might surprise you what would be in here. What do you think might be in this bag? can't really see what's in here. Well, if I feel in this bag... It's one of the Beanie Babies. Oh, I could tell. It's the prayer bear. Isn't that a great one? He's praying for all of us, our prayer bear. We'll put him back in his basket. Oh. And a marker. I could feel that. That might be in there because we always use markers to write with. Hmm, let me think. Ooh, this is kind of squishy. What would be squishy? Oh my gosh, it's a marshmallow. Oh, you know? As I went through there, any of those items seem surprising that they would be in the bag? You know, I think the most surprising thing is this marshmallow that was in there. And you know, in the Bible, there are parts of the story that probably surprised you. What was one thing that was surprising in our story today? <clears throat> you know, the time had finally come for the promised Messiah to enter the world, so God himself came to the earth to be the perfect sacrifice for sin. And we might expect that God of the universe would come as a conquering hero, not as a helpless baby. The birth of Jesus was surprising. We might expect the Savior of the world to be born in a palace or a mansion, 
But Jesus was born in a stable because there was no room for them in the inn to parents who were poor. We might expect God to announce the arrival of his son to the great kings and rulers of the day, but instead the angels showed up to a group of scruffy shepherds who were in the field late at night watching their sheep. Everything about Jesus' birth was surprising, but none of it surprised God because he had this plan all along to send his son into the world in a humble way to show the world what kind of king he would be. God's kingdom is unlike the kingdoms of this world. People who are poor, humble, and broken are all welcomed into God's family. People who know they need God's forgiveness. Even the way God brought about salvation for us is surprising. What did Jesus do to save us? He led, led a sinless life. But then he died a terrible death on the cross. He died that terrible death on the cross. Remember, he died on the cross and rose again on the third day. Jesus is our conquering king and savior, and he has defeated death and sin. And he brings us near to God when we humble ourselves and submit our lives to him. Isn't that wonderful? Now, we have a new Bible verse for this week, also, this month also. <clears throat> and it comes from the book of John. This is the fourth book of the New Testament, and it's one of the four Gospels. It was written by Jesus' disciple, John, who followed him closely during the, his, the three years of Jesus' earthly ministry. And John witnessed <clears throat> Jesus' miracles and heard Jesus teach about his kingdom. And our key, our key verse is spoken by another man named John. This is John the Baptist who says this. And John the Baptist knew that Jesus was God's son and there was there to rescue the world from sin. And here's our verse. <clears throat> the next day he saw Jesus coming tor toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1.29 so John the Baptist knew this when he immediately saw Jesus. So that's our verse. Let's pra keep practicing it. We have six weeks for this verse. And I know you'll be able to do it. Let's pray. Father God, we worship you because you are our creator who gives and sustains our lives. We thank you for your word and for the way you show us that what you are like in the Bible. And thank you most of all for sending your son, Jesus Christ, from heaven to earth to set us free from our sins and bring us into your kingdom so we can have that relationship that you so want with us and we so desire. In your son's most precious name, we thank you. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.